So now in this video, we're going to look at this integrated circuit. So it's part number is longer, but basically it is a 74174 integrated circuit. It's the high speed CMOS version because I got it uh, out of this kit right there. And uh, that's the slot it was in. In any case, it is a hex. So there's six D type flip flops with clear. And there is the clear there. So there's six flip flops we're only going to look at one so we'll come to that in a little bit so first off this integrated circuit the uh, flip flop version each one of them responds actually they all respond to the clock right there and so the signal we're going to give the clock is going to come from the output of this 555 timer and you can see that uh, the output's high now when the LED is on, output is low when the LED is off. This will just give us a visual. So 5 volts now, 0 volts. Now, to set the time, we have a 33,000 ohm resistor there, 33,000 ohm resistor there. That sets how long it takes the capacitor to charge. Once it's charged up 2 thirds of power supply voltage, output goes low, discharge pin goes low, it discharges through that uh, 33,000 ohm resistor. That's why takes twice as long to charge the LED here is on about twice as long and that's it for the 555 timer all we care about for it is that it's a 100 uh, microfarad by the way if you're interested in component values that is a 10 nanofarad just to kind of make sure we don't have any glitches but in any case 220 ohm resistor protecting the LED as will be the one protecting over there in case I forget so Let's uh, look at the integrated circuit we came to look at. And so there's the 74, 174. It also says MM before there or MC and then N at the end. But uh, it's a 74, 174. That's the main thing. We have a clear pin right there. So this overpowers whatever we're doing if we set it low. In fact, even when it's floating, the outputs will be low. Otherwise, it doesn't do anything. And uh, we got to power the integrated circuit. So Pin number 16 goes to the positive rail right there. Pin number 8 goes to the negative rail. We have to use 5 volts for this integrated circuit. You can differ it a little bit, but it's uh, really made for 5 volts. And so check the data sheet for any other range of voltages you want to use. And so we have here one of the flip flops. We have this jumper. That is the uh, data pin. And so the data input right there. Here is the output. And that's what we're going to look at signal wise. And so everything's powered now. And so once we attach the LED, we'll probably see it lit up. But we may not. So that's the output going one row from that jumper to the negative rail. It's going to take an LED, of course, whenever you're using an LED for it to light up, the longer lead, the anode, has to be more positive. And uh, so we're going to put that to the resistor there. Short lead, the cathode, we're going to put to the negative rail. So now you can see the output is high. And that's not surprising because the input right here is high. But uh, we can put the uh, input low and uh, we got uh, some stuff going on. So this isn't wired uh, completely right yet. We're going to take this jumper here. And uh, that's because this clock pin is floating. And we're going to put that to the output. So we're getting the high or low signal, which we can see with the LED. And now we're going to go over here. So the input's high, the output's high. Right now, the way things are, this this is going to hold steady right there, output high. We can uh, take the, the uh, clear pin, though, and even while it's floating, apparently that's enough to give it a low signal, at least briefly. But uh, we put it to the negative rail. That sets the uh, clear pin low. It sets all the outputs of the different uh, flip-flops low, no matter what goes on. So we'll move this over here. And now right when you saw the output go high of the 555 timer, so the clock pin went high, this LED turned on. It's right when it goes high. And uh, we can uh, I'll move that. I'll put it low. You see nothing happens until that goes high. Right when it goes high. It's right on the edge of it going high. So it's high, I can still move it, that stays low until the output goes off and then on. So it's right when it goes high. And so you can even change what the uh, input here, the data input is. Well, we have a high signal to the clock 
it's not until it flips high that it changes again and uh, that's the uh, basic way that it works I don't think I have any more on that so this is just a demonstration circuit this is not a practical circuit I mean maybe you'll come up with uh, some kind of circuit like this someday but uh, this is just a really simple demonstration circuit it's a new integrated circuit for me I can't even think of any more complex circuits I would wire up I could look for some but uh, for now this is it it's pretty straightforward the output of each one of these uh, flip-flops wants to be the data input for the most part but it has to wait for right when the clock pin gets a positive uh, signal so all of these could be switching what they are the inputs could all be switching well we have not flipped to a high state and then they got time to settle down before that flips high and changes all of them at the same time you could do that kind of stuff so in any case again just a basic uh, demonstration circuit new integrated circuit for me I'm no expert or anything but hopefully this will help you understand other material that uh, the experts do present to you so thanks for watching I will see you in the next video